I worked remotely for 100% of my post-graduation career, so I've spent a lot of time in Slack. Hey, I'm Kylie. I'm a video producer for my day job, and I don't gatekeep the tricks that I've learned to be more productive. It's taken me a couple of years to figure out the Slack tricks that are most useful, so I'm going to be sharing eight hacks with you to save you that time. Our first hack lets you lurk on a thread without adding a comment, but still get notifications. Before I knew about this, I would comment plus one to follow on threads, which is not what you want to do when the thread is already busy. It just adds clutter. Now I know better. Just go to the three dots in the top corner of that thread and click get notifications. Even if you don't interact, you can get all the tea. You can also do the opposite for threads that you have been active in and now don't want to be notified for. That option is in the same menu at the top of the thread. Hack number two will help you stay organized and find the channels that you need faster. At first, I would just star channels to mark them as important, but you'll find that eventually, if you have too many channels starred, it's not helpful anymore. That's where sections come in. You can create them to act as dividers on your Slack sidebar and separate its channels out in any way that makes sense for you. For my work, I like to have only the channels that I use every day, multiple times a day in starred. The rest go in sections labeled fun, resources, and I also have a graveyard for channels that I've muted but may want to come back to in the future. The third thing you need to know about Slack is how to search efficiently. You can bookmark messages in Slack. You end up running into the same problem as you do with the starred channels. There's just too many messages to filter through. When searching, the shortcuts that I use the most often are in channel and in name. Or if you remember who the message is from but not what channel it's in, from name works as well. After telling Slack where to search, you can add the keywords that'll help you find what you're looking for. But my favorite use of search is when I'm looking for a file that might not have a name that's easily searchable. We all know those images with just a string of numbers. Finding that is actually kind of easy if you know who it's from. You can choose the files filter when you click to search in Slack, then choose who it's from and even choose a file type to help you narrow it down. Hack number four is the remind feature. And I'll be honest, I didn't start using this until a few weeks ago, and I can't believe I waited this long. In the chat, slash remind will let you set a reminder to yourself that Slack will send to you at the time you pick. I still use a paper to-do list for most things, but for time sensitive tasks, remind has been a game changer. Hack number five is my most used Slack feature by far, and that is to schedule messages. You can schedule a Slack message to send later by hitting the little arrow next to the send button. Then you can choose a time and date to send it. It's so simple, but I use it in so many ways. If a teammate is out of office, I can write a question and then schedule it for the day that they get back. That way I don't forget to ask and they're not getting notifications while they're out. I also use it when I send updates in a company-wide Slack channel. I schedule it for Wednesdays and I'll generally create it on a Monday morning. That way I don't forget to do it later in the week. Seriously, there's so many reasons to use the schedule send feature. If you're thinking of one that I didn't mention, I'd love if you let me know in the comments. Hack six is actually one that's pretty common in Discord servers, but it works really well in Slack too. If you want feedback on multiple choices, say titles for a video, use an emoji poll to get a really quick at a glance look at everyone's opinion. Hack number seven is the most useful in a teamwork situation when projects have a whole lot of moving parts. You can actually set auto replies, almost like a frequently asked questions bot, so that you don't have to spend time responding to the questions that get asked over and over and over again. To set it up, just head to the workspace name, click administration, then go to the Slack bot option. Whatever question people ask, you can type it in to add an answer. One caveat here is that it really only works when questions are asked the same way, like when is the website launching? Because the bot responds based on the exact text you type in. So more freeform questions may not work well here. The last Slack hack I'll share is to connect your Google Calendar to Slack to get notified for meetings and get automatic status updates. That tutorial is in the video linked on screen and in the description. There's also two more Google Calendar hacks there. Thanks for watching.